Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Diana. And this is my channel, So In Common. Thanks so much for joining us today. So recently, I have been getting some questions, and I thought today would be a good day to do a quilt lab, uh, kind of a Q&A on what to do when this happens, when we're piecing our blocks in the hoop. And I'm going to be answering some questions that I've received from some of you, our viewers, like... Um, um my i'm getting a funny string when i wash away my wash away stabilizer things like that um what do i do when that happens well if any of that kind of thing interests you if you're doing our quilt along and you're seeing some things that you find kind of weird stay tuned because today that's exactly what we're going to answer for you Okay, everybody, let's get started. So I've received a couple of questions, like I said, and I thought we would just go over them today because they're little, I call them artifacts of things that happen when we piece in the hoop of our embroidery machine um, that we don't see if we piece our quilts on the sewing machine or by hand. So piecing with your embroidery machine and a little finishing on your sewing machine is kind of a new technique in the world. Um, just been kind of out there in different formats and ideas, maybe for the last couple of years. My build a quilt system is brand new just this past year. Um, it took me years to work on it and get it uh, to where I wanted it for you all and for myself because I use it too. Excuse me, just one second. I do apologize. Um, uh, uh, it's it's harvest time where I live, and that always brings on allergies for me. Um, so sorry about that. But um, all of those different kinds of things can cause little artifacts to happen that we don't normally see. And so a couple of you have run into them. And I do apologize. I've really been remiss about talking about them because I don't necessarily think about them myself anymore. So my apologies, but today we're going to cover them. And one of them has to do with using wash away stabilizer. Now you all know that wash away stabilizer is my go-to for piecing in the hoop because I can get rid of it so that when I'm done, all I'm dealing with is my fabric. I don't have any stabilizer in there. It's as if I had done it on my sewing machine, but so much easier because the digital file has created that all of the seam allowances and everything for me right on my embroidery machine. Um, and I don't have the extra bulk of using a cutaway or a lightweight muslin, which are both fine. They can be used. And I will admit I used them for a long time until I ran a lot of experiments and decided wash away was the way to go. However, you might see, now none of you have said anything about this one to me. This is something I found. And I thought, you know what? We should talk about this because if I'm seeing it, then some of you guys might be seeing it too. Let's bring up this square. So this is the front square. This has been washed away and air dried. It has not been pressed yet. So it might look a little wrinkly. That's okay. It's not too bad actually, but I haven't pressed this yet. But you can see that's the front of it. Okay, I cut it out using my um, uh, pinking rotary cutter. But now let's look at the back. I don't, gosh, because it's in white or in light gray, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe if I put my finger, do you see that string right there? Look at that. Oh, what's that all about? That's not good, right? That means my, my stitches are coming out. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that at all. <laughs> what that means is, remember, when we use our stuff in the hoop, the very first thing we do is we stitch down right on the stabilizer a placement line, right? And for a square, it is the whole square. Then we cut it out, we take it, and we rinse out all the stabilizer using my little method. And if you haven't seen that video, um, how to remove stabilizer from your um, quilts with my technique. I have two of them. I have one for doing segment pieces and one for doing whole blocks. I prefer segment, but you can do whole block if you like. And 
the one reason I like segment is because I can take care of this kind of a thing if I see it much easier than if it happens with the whole block. Okay, so what that string is right there, and you'll notice it's not coming off all the way around, just in that corner. And sometimes I see it, I've seen it where it's just down the side. What is it? It is that original placement stitch. Because let's think about it. When we stitch that placement stitch down before we do the tack down stitch, we are only stitching into the stabilizer. And when this stabilizer gets wet, what happens? It washes away, it dissolves. And so what you're seeing right here is your placement stitch. And I wouldn't come in here and start trying to drag the whole thing out because then you're liable to start tearing out other stitches. But if that's there, just to get rid of it, I like to take these little handy dandy snips. See the little hook on here, right here? Do you see that little hook? That is so great because it gets right in to the um, fabric and the string. Let me see if I can show you here. It gets right in there and snips just that string as close as you want it. And then I snip it at the other side and there's the little string that was there. Now I throw that away and I keep using it. Now I've seen on this block that it's also coming free over on this other edge a little bit. So I will go in there and I will just snip this off too. But I don't pull on it and try to make the whole thing come off because sometimes, and what happens most of the time, is your, your tack down stitch that tacks the fabric down will catch that string and it can end up just staying in there. And that's fine. It's that final stitch, though, that you want to make sure stays there because that's your guideline. And it will stay because it's in the fabric. It's not getting washed away. But sometimes the placement washes out when it, you wash away the stabilizer will come loose on here. That's fine. Just clip, clip them where they're loose and get rid of them. All the rest of them that stay in there, leave them be. Don't start going in there and taking them all out or I think you're going to end up with a hot mess. Let's just be honest. And, and those will go away um, and, and they can start pulling your other pieces apart. Now, that's that piece. There is another question in kind of the same idea that I got from um, one of our viewers. And I personally have had this problem. In fact, I took my Stellaire, which is embroidery only, in for maintenance because I thought my machine was broken. It was not tacking down my fabric. I, I didn't know why. And what we figured out after many hours of testing and talking with the maintenance tech, what we found out was that on an embroidery machine only, the bobbin is set for embroidery. And by embroidery, I mean, you know, little fill stitch things with all the stitches freestanding lace, all that kind of stuff. But what we're asking our embroidery to do is really give us an easier time of just straight stitching like we would do with our sewing machine. Just straight old stitches, nothing fancy, the most basic stitch ever. And the embroidery bobbin is not quite, we found out, set up to do long swaths of straight stitching. And by long, I mean just like that five inches there. It's not really set up to do that. So sometimes it cannot catch and you can end up with your piece not staying together like along your half square triangle or just at the beginning, it won't catch while you're trying to tack it down. And I was really worried about that because this was when I was in the process of creating build a quilt and I thought, oh my gosh, maybe I'm not going to be able to, we're not going to be able to do this. Maybe this is just not going to work. Um, and I'm going to have to go back and start all over again. 
not the case. Let's talk bobbin cases. Now, I know some of you have machines with one bobbin case and one bobbin case only. My Stellaire is that way. But when I took it in, the maintenance person found that there is the same brand, works for the same brand machine, but a sewing bobbin case that will fit and work in my Stellaire. So it is created and made to straight stitch only. Excellent. Or, you know, like the decorative stitches, which are still kind of straight stitches in their, in their own right. Oh my goodness. Was that a clever idea? This guy who did this should now start marketing <laughs> sewing bobbin cases for build a, build a quilt and quilting in the hoop as quilting in the hoop bobbin cases because they work perfectly. We're asking our embroidery machine to just stitch, just straight line stitch. And a sewing bobbin case will do that for you. Now, if you've never had that problem with your machine, my dream machine, I don't have that problem. My baby lock machine, I don't have that problem. Baby lock is a combo. My or, uh, dream machine is a combo. My baby lock is a um, embroidery only. My Stellaire is an embroidery only, and that's the machine that has the problem. But with a sewing bobbin case that he found from the same manufacturer, same brand, same like level of machine, it works perfectly. I've not had a slipped stitch since. So let's talk about bobbin cases, because if you have a combo machine, you might already have a bobbin case that will work for you. So bobbin cases, I just pulled this one, will be, have a couple of things. And where the dot is will mean something for your machine. Some of the bobbin cases will have a dot down in here. See where that purple dot is? When, that means something. That It'll either mean for sewing or it'll mean for embroidery. And then some of them will have a dot here by a little screw. And that will mean the opposite of what that means. And I'm not telling you which it means because it might be different for your manufacturer. I'm not positive. Okay. So check your manuals. And if your manual doesn't say, which it should, but if for some reason it doesn't, check with your local maintenance tech. They'll tell you, or your local store where you've got your machine, they can tell you. But you'll want to get a bobbin case. And I will tell you, when I bought the bobbin case for my Stellaire, it was $30 in tax. So it wasn't bad, all right? It wasn't like it was $150 or something crazy like that. If that had been the case, I would have bought it, but I would have gulped a little bit. $30 wasn't that bad, I didn't think. Um, to do it, to do what I wanted, right? So check your bobbin cases. And if you have a combo machine and you're using your embroidery case, okay, let's listen again. If you have a combo machine and you're using your embroidery bobbin case and you're having this problem, flip it out for the sewing bobbin case and just give it a little test because it should work for you much better. Mine sure did. Okay. Um, and he even tried it on some other brands. The shop where I get my machines carries three brands of machines. He tried this idea out on all three and it worked. He tried it on uh, Janome, Brother. Oh, what's the other one? It's not Baby Lock. Um, Janome, Brother. Maybe it was Foff he tried it on. But it worked perfectly. Okay. So if you have an embroidery only machine and you're having that problem, then talk with the shop where you got your machine and see if they can find for you same manufacturer, but a sewing bobbin case that will work. Now, if you're not having this problem, just everything I just said, just keep it in your back of your brain for someday, maybe if you ever need it. Don't do anything if you're not having the problem, okay? This isn't something that everyone has to go and do. This is something that is a, a fix if you're having that problem, 
All righty. So please don't go running into your stores and saying, I have to have a sewing bob in case Diana says so if I want a quilt loop. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying only do that if you're having that problem. Make sure from your maintenance tech that there's nothing else going on with your machine as well that, you know, you haven't, you know, not cleaned it in three years or <laughs> and you guys know what I'm talking about because we all kind of do that sometimes. So make sure there's nothing going on with your machine and then talk about that idea with them. Okay. All righty. So that is the two stitching questions that I had. Now, the third thing I want to talk about today, this is not going to be a, a horribly long video this week, but these things are important that we talk about. The third thing is I've had several people contact me now and say, can we join your quilt along? Of course, we're in week two can join of course you can do it there's no cost to it everything is free you get it all over at our um at our website so uncommon.com the information sheets the patterns all of that over there and i think i'm pretty forward about saying that we piece our things in the embroidery machine that this is done with your embroidery machine but some folks either haven't heard that or they've watched a video or they've seen something and that part wasn't there. And so they've been a little upset because there are no traditional piecing methods listed, like piecing with your sewing machine. That's the most popular one. Not too many people piece by hand anymore. So that there hasn't been any sewing machine piecing instructions. And they said, can we do it that way? And here's the deal, folks. Build a quilt is about giving you the luxury of doing it with your embroidery machine. I've been a quilter for over 55 years. I can certainly piece on my sewing machine. But I don't do that with build a quilt because that's not what our goal is. Our goal is to bring quilting to anyone and everyone that wants to quilt that maybe has problems with their hands and can't do all the sewing as much or that is new to it and wants a more modern technique. Um, however, I am not saying no to people that like to piece with their sewing machine, but this is what I'm telling you. I don't write those patterns for my, for my patterns anymore. I don't write the traditional because I'm just going to be completely open and honest it's too much time. I'm one person designing and digitizing and writing and testing for my build a quilt system is all I have time to do. However, I've been thinking about this because I don't ever want to turn anybody down who wants to quilt with us because the more quilters, the better. And I love you guys so much. I want you to be able to quilt with us if you want to. So this is what I can say. This is what I can do. I can tell you that for the quilt along, each and every block we make is a certain finished size. They're 15 by 15 for the Starlight Starbright quilt along. If you are already a quilter and you want to do the quilt along with us, you can but you will have to know like how to do this inspired star or Lemoyne star, whatever you want to call it. You'll have to know how to cut the fabric and stitch your half square triangles and all on your sewing machine. I can't take the extra time to do all the videos for that. And the measuring for traditional piecing, a sewing machine piecing style is different than what we do with the embroidery machine. Um, and so if you know how to quilt and you can look at the layout sheet that you get in your, in the packets and say, okay, I need so many, so I need so many of these and so many of these, and that will all be, that'll all tell you in the instructions. But if you know how to make them on the sewing machine, then please do just know that the fabric measurements will not be the same. If you use those fabric measurements, you will have to trim down quite a bit. Um, and you'll have to trim your blocks probably like you do with traditional quilting to square them up 
we don't have to square up when we piece with our embroidery machine. That's another advantage. So, but you're more than welcome to do it with us and post and tell us, hey, I did this with my regular sewing machine. I don't have an embroidery machine. And a lot of people have asked this because they don't have embroidery machines. But I don't want to turn you away and say, no, you're not welcome. Because, of course, you are welcome. I just don't have the time. Now, it could be, I can't promise this. It could be in the future that I can do a set of videos on how to create a half square triangle and some of these things, videos out there for you all. But I won't be writing patterns and all for sewing machine piecing. And for that, I apologize. But like for me as a quilter who knows how to piece with my sewing machine, I could look at that and look at the instructions that I give you. And I could figure that out and put it together on my own and make the four of them. And, and quilt. all you need to know is what your finished size block is. And for this quilt along, every block is a finished size of 15 by 15, which means, you know, you've got to know that these on uh, like the, the inspired star, each one of those finished segment pieces are three and three quarter inches. Okay. I can tell you those kinds of things. If that helps you, if that does help you, and you're a sewing machine piecer, let me know in the comments. Because like I said, I don't want to turn anybody away. And I've done something else. Because I've told you all before, I have two pretty big, fully featured embroidery and embroidery sewing combo machines. But I have another embroidery machine, my baby lock, which is just very basic. But it came with a 4 by 4 5 by 7 and a 6 by 10 hoop. That's all you should ever need to use the build a quilt system and piece your quilts. Okay. So you could check with your local fabric shop and say, what is an, just get an embroidery only. Don't even worry about getting a combo because you've probably already got a great sewing machine. What is the least expensive fully featured embroidery machine that has at least a five by seven and maybe a five by seven and a six by 10 hoop in case you want to do some multi hooping now and again. You could do that. And what I have done, and I am not trying to sell you on going and getting an embroidery machine by any, any, in any way, but I want to show you this in case it might be something that fits your life. Maybe you would love to do it with your embroidery machine and you don't have a machine yet. And when you go into the shops, they're like, oh, we want to sell you a $16,000 machine or an $8,000 machine. And you're like, uh, not for quilts. You don't have to spend that kind of money because a basic embroidery machine will do the trick for what we do here. And you can still do embroidery too. Um, so I am going to share with you a page from joanne.com, believe it or not. They have started carrying some in their shop stores now, some online of good brands, Brother, Janome, um, singer and i'm going to show you some just to show you price range and the type of features i'm not telling you run out and get any of these however if you're like me and you live out in the sticks in the rural areas of the country it's nice that they will ship to you not all stores not all fabric shops are allowed to ship that's part of their contract with the manufacturers some of like the 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 place that I go to, they're not allowed to ship me my machine. Even if I buy it and I go in for my classes and do all that, they're not allowed to ship me my machine. I have to pick it up so because that's part of their contract. So, um, but this way you could get a small basic machine, which is all you need, and they could ship it to you. So let me bring up this page. Um, and I'm going to come, here we go. So I just went in and typed embroidery machines. And it came up with a bunch of stuff. Some of these machines, like this little one right here, this Brother SC700, it only has a four by four hoop. That, that really won't work for you because most of our segment pieces need a five by seven. Some of them can work in a four by four, but 
it's best to have a five by seven. However, this brother PE 900 right here, it comes with a five by seven hoop. And it's, um, I believe it's a, is it a combo? No, it's embroidery only. So it, now it's not $499, it's $1149.99, but it's a good little machine. I actually know this machine. I have a friend who has it and uses it. She loves it. Um, you get, you know, built-in stitches. You can add your stitches in there, all of that kind of thing. Um, now let's go back. I thought this was embroidery only. This might be sewing as well. Let me, uh, built-in embroidery. embroidery. Yeah, no, embroidery, downloadable. Oh, and you get 50 free downloadable designs. So something like that would work perfectly if what you want it for is maybe a little bit of embroidery now and again, but you want to build your quilts with us, okay? Uh, this PE545 right here, again, only a four by four hoop. However, I'm loving that I'm seeing this wireless LAN on here. That means wireless means you can um, wirelessly send your files. That's nice. So let's look, uh, uh, SE200, that's the other one I want to look at. Oh. Let's talk about this Janome Memorycraft 400E. This is an embroidery only, and it's a nice machine. Look at this price here, $24.99.99. Do not get it from Joann's. QVC of all places has it right now for $11.47.19. And here's the cool thing. The hoop that comes with it is eight by eight, which means you're going to even be able to make some of our ex extended size pieces that is coming in the new year. Okay. That eight by eight is a great hoop size to have, and you could do some multi-hooping with your smaller segment pieces, but don't pay 2,500 when you can get it at qvc.com for 1147.19. And they break it down into monthly payments for you too, if that helps. So um, that makes that machine much more palatable. Um, I don't use personally Janome, but I know that a lot of people that do and love it. Okay. This little Elna, only a four by four. This Singer SE9180, you don't want this one. It's a combo machine. And I'll tell you the reason why you don't want it. It comes with one hoop and the hoop is the oddest size I've ever heard of. Four by six and three quarters. Very interesting hoop size. But unfortunately, you couldn't do your five by five segment pieces in it because it's not wide enough. It's only allows for four inch wide. However, this one right next to it. And I love this one. The Singer Less Legacy SE 300 sewing and embroidery. This is a combo. This embroidery only version that they had out for a long time was my very first embroidery machine that my husband purchased for me as a gift when I started loving embroidery. And I will tell you, this little machine works great. You get a four by four hoop and a six by 10 hoop. And I know they make a five by five if you wanted to purchase a five by five as an add-on piece. And look at the price, guys, for a combo machine, $799.99. Now, I know Singer went through a long period of time where it got really a bad name. I don't know why. I've never had any problems with my Singer. I still have a Singer heavy duty machine that I use today. It's the best little workout horse machine I've ever owned. Um, I can tell you this is a nice little machine. And I can tell you that it would work beautifully for piecing in the hoop. So if you're wanting to jump in, that's a thought for you. Okay, let's come back over here now. Let's get rid of that. Those are just some machines that I found through Joann's. You can check, check allbrands.com. They are a machine, they, all brands, and they're fantastic. I know those people very well, and they're wonderful, and I do believe they can ship some of their machines check them out. You might find a really good deal on an embroidery only. I know that Legacy was a combo machine. If you don't have either sewing or embroidery and you want to get going on this, a little combo machine like that would work great. But like I said, I'm not pushing you guys to buy any machines at all. Um, I just wanted to give those of you that have been curious 
and saying, I can't because I don't have an embroidery machine and why don't you do patterns for regular quilting? The other thing is there's a million other sites and people who do quilts, quilting patterns out there for sewing machine quilting. And when I decided to start my business in this area, I really wanted something that would fit other people that were being held up because of other problems or concerns or things that they were looking for. That's how Build a Quilt came about. So anyway, I hope that these things were helpful for you all today. Um, I certainly uh, love having you all here, whether you can actually quilt with us or not. You know that we are over 37,000 followers here at YouTube now. And I know that we have a great deal of new followers from overseas. And I want to welcome you all. I love you all so much because I know if you're a quilter, we have something in common. And quilters are very special people. So welcome everybody to the Sew in Common family. Love having you. If you want to contact me privately because you have some questions about some of the things I've talked about today or you'd like more information, um, like I said, I'm not recommending any of the machines I told you about. I'm just telling you what I could find out from that website and the little bit I know about the legacy from having owned one. Um, I know that Brother has some other machines that are embroidery only that do have five by seven hoops that are great as well. Um, Baby Lock probably still has a smaller machine. I know they've really moved into more mid and larger machines and so has Brother, but so is everybody because embroiderers want huge hoops for big, huge, beautiful pieces of embroidery and that's wonderful. Um, but that's not the kind of machine you need to build your quilts with. So if you need to contact me privately, support at sewincommon.com. But remember, I'm going to suggest that you put your question and comment here on the video in the comment section, because if you've had this question and it's not too private a question, somebody else has too. And I'd love to go ahead and just answer it for everybody. But it's your choice for this video. If you'd rather contact me privately, that's fine. If you're looking for our free patterns or our um, quilt as you go, or not quilt as you go, our quilt along, Starlight, Starbright, or for our Build a Quilt basic block set one, you're ready to start that doing your own quilts, doing bigger quilts and all, and you're ready to purchase your first basic set, that's available too. Um, lots comes with that. You can read all about that over there. Um, of course, you can do that, all of that at our website, sewingcommon.com. And please, if you like this video, if it was helpful, or if you've liked any of my videos, would you please subscribe to the channel? I would just love to have you as a family member here at Sewing Common. And please, like the video and share. That really means a great deal to me. It helps me know what you all like. And it also really helps um, YouTube for them to know. If you guys like and you share, they will make sure these videos get put out in the YouTube sphere, as I call it, um, for more people to see. And so you will be helping others so life beautiful. So please like, share, subscribe. Until next time, everybody, please do. So life beautiful. And I'll see you again real soon. This coming week, we're all into uh, week two of our Cult Along Starlight Star Bright. So that video is out now. Um, I'll link it at the end of this one for you. Bye for now, everybody. Hi, friends. Here are a couple more videos that I think will really help on your quilting in the hoop journey. Please enjoy. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and as always, so life beautiful!